Of course, lots of people will tell me, oh, we keep that for paler colors. But normally, uh, when optimizing your dye, it is almost nothing. But this is a, an exceptional case because we wanted to compare different models. So uh, some of them were less efficient. So it means that there's a lot of uh, color left in the juice. So I transfer twice. So in case I have some particles at the bottom, as it is the case here, I will not put the particles together. That's very important. So first you strain correctly, then you warm, and then you add some mordant. I have no idea of how much I have, so we'll put maybe, okay, maybe 100 or 100. And then I have to be patient. At the moment it will warm, you will see some cloudy thing appearing, and then it will be uh, the pigment. So I will prepare everything to filter the pigment in a funnel on a cloth and you will see that um, pigment under the form of a paste so that we can keep in a pot as a paste if you like to print on fabric and you can also dry it to make a uh, paint so artist pigment for different purposes you can dry or keep fresh if you want to print. So after some uh, time when heating the lake is appearing and so the color is separating clearly from uh, the liquid so it is time to filter to strain so a single simple cloth on a funnel is enough so the first time I will uh, uh, put it through it might be that some of the color is passing and then gradually it will saturate the fabric and so the, the color will stay here. You see, no, no, it's okay. Uh, maybe I will repeat that. So you see the color is extremely pale and then this is, ah, that's, that's funny because this is an interesting thing. You can dispose of it. There's a there's only inside a little bit of um, uh, organic but the whole acetate actually is decomposed here and there's also a little bit of sodium sulfate which was generating during uh, the modern uh, fabrication so this sodium sulfate is not a big issue for the environment that's a super neutral thing um, I remember of a colleague who did ask that for the, uh, he said it's good for the, the worms in, in, in the ground because of the sulfur. But I personally sometimes dispose and sometimes use it for um, extraction of uh, matter, for making pigment. So this solution can be reused for extraction of matter. That's funny, to, to, that's good to know. So actually I will not have a big, big mass of pigment but it takes a bit to, to strain and then you will see a, a beautiful color uh, in the in the filter on the filter so you see how easy it is now to filter I, uh, so if it doesn't strain so easily it might be that you you took the wrong fabric I mean some fabric which is too tight could be but also it could be that you didn't warm enough you did not heat enough so lots of people tell me that they tried that uh, method and they have difficult to strain and if you have difficult to strain it means that you were not patient enough here so there are plenty of little tricks like that that's the job huh? that's that's how we proceed so now I will prepare everything to recycle the sediment. You know, the powder, the matter powder is precious. And then I will show you a quick system with the microwave. Because most of the time people don't like to cook for long and to boil and everything. So they do not recycle and they dispose of the matter. You know, the powder already used. 
but in fact there's a second pigment there and uh, this is extremely interesting to um, to say because that this is the red and the other one is the pink but a beautiful pink so you will have two different shades so the red is actually going to the um, to the fabric here you will see that better later and then I will prepare everything to make the pink okay so now step uh, two is done so I mean the filtra filtration is done I will just have to decant because we are very often have some little bit of sediment so I like to do it like that this is important I don't want to have um, sawdust from the root inside of my um, my pigment of course so that's kind of so does I have to separate so now making the lake so making the lake is always agreeable to see because people like very much this step because of course when I will put my soda ash it will be like kind of um, uh, um, effervescence so first of all I dissolve this and then okay, I have to wipe this one and then I will gradually put that inside and of course I will have a tremendous uh, foam appearing step by step so I need to wait a little bit because it's it's quite uh, impetuous and then uh, after some time the foam will fall and I will put more and then when straining I will have a beautiful pink What is interesting actually, it is that we cannot, uh, we have difficult to do it with the new matter. The exhausted matter is giving much better than the new one. So that's extremely interesting. So it means that uh, you recycle for uh, making a precious thing. You do not recycle by kind of a well, ecological concern and it, it is expensive to do it because now you will see that the pigment we will do is very beautiful and then it will bring you some money um, I mean it will have an added value so uh, this will be interesting for printing I will wait for a while and um, I can um, I can also use um, um, a mixer so I look for a mixer so that it will break the foam okay so we have that amount of sodium carbonate again to add so it will probably generate more effervescence
extremely clear you see it is just looking like water here and then that's my second recycling for another color so practically we can oh, sorry practically we can recycle most of the dye pots but the first goal is to have uh, to optimize optimize sorry the first goal is to optimize the dye uh, by itself so it means that if your juice is totally transparent after the dye session you do not have anything to recycle that's even better so it means the color is on the fabric and uh, if ever you have some second color behind like it is for the mother it is extremely interesting to understand how to use so for example the well uh, you know the, the dyes uh, reseda there are many many people who finish their dye and they dispose of the of the of, of the plant but in fact at the moment the plant is exhausted there is still some very interesting content of yellow so uh, I, will, I will demonstrate that later okay so almost done you see I will have uh, some amount because well Actually, this matter was uh, used for sampling, so we know that by having different versions of, of the model, sometimes we did not optimize the dye, so uh, that's why we had all these colors left in the matter. But I can promise you that lots of people they dye and they waste 90% of their color because they don't know how to recycle and also how to optimize the dye pot. So next session will be dedicated to uh, the dye pot by itself. So I mean we have now plenty of um, tablecloth which are already uh, modernized and then I uh, will present a range of shades uh, uh, on them. So let's finish that first. <laughs> 